Hi kids, this is Mrs. Holderbaum, and today I'm going to read you Down Comes the Rain. Down Comes the Rain. Rain comes from clouds. It comes from big clouds and little clouds. It comes from black clouds, white clouds, and gray clouds. All clouds, big ones and little ones, gray ones and white ones, are made of billions of tiny drops of water. The drops are called droplets because they are so small. If this is the size of a drop of water, a droplet would be even smaller. A droplet would just be a tiny speck, even smaller than this one. Water droplets come from water vapor. Water vapor is a gas. There's always water vapor in the air, but you can't see it, can't smell it, and you can't feel it. Water vapor is made when water evaporates. That means the water changes from a liquid to a gas. In the morning, put a teaspoon of water in a saucer or a bowl. By that night, it may have evaporated into the air. The water will be gone. When wet clothes hang on the clothesline, the water in them evaporates. The heat from the sun changes the water drops and droplets into water vapor. Just like the heat from the stove changes water in the kettle to water vapor. If you heat it long enough, all the water boils away. The water vapor goes into the air. Most of the water vapor in the air comes from lakes, rivers, and oceans. It comes from the leaves of plants and from the wet ground. Heat from the sun causes water vapor to evaporate. The water changes from liquid to gas and the water vapor goes into the air. When you breathe out, you put water vapor into the air. Usually you cannot see the water vapor. Sometimes if it's cold, you can see your breath. That's because the water vapor condenses. It changes from a gas to a little cloud. When cows, horses, dogs, and cats breathe out, they put water vapor into the air too. On a cold day, the water vapor changes into droplets and makes little clouds that you can see. You can make water vapor change to water. Put a lot of ice into a glass of water. As the glass gets colder, the outside of the glass gets wet. Water vapor in the air is condensing on the glass. There may be so much condensation that the glass drips. Sometimes the glass stays dry. That means there's not much water vapor in the air. The air holds the water vapor. Breezes carry it from one place to another. Much of the vapor moves up and away from earth. Air above the earth is always cold. The higher you go, the colder it gets. The air, when the air gets cold enough, the water vapor in it condenses. The water vapor changes to water droplets. The water droplets make clouds. When clouds are wispy, thin, and when clouds are thin and wispy, they are holding only a little water. When clouds are thick and dark, they are holding much more water. A single droplet is so small you cannot see it, but you can see a cloud. That's because there are millions and millions and millions of water droplets in a cloud. Inside the clouds, droplets join together to make drops. When clouds can no longer hold them, the drops fall to earth. The sky is full of them. They fall through the air and splatter on the ground. They are raindrops. Sometimes there are only a few small raindrops that fall slowly. It is drizzling. Sometimes there are lots of big drops that fall very fast. Now it's pouring. 
Sometimes the drops and clouds freeze. These are raindrops. These raindrops become ice drops. This can happen even on a hot summer day. Some clouds may be higher than most airplanes ever go. The higher clouds, the colder they are. That's because the clouds and water droplets are so high above the earth. Many clouds are so high that it's freezing cold. In these high cold clouds, water vapor changes to droplets and the droplets change to drops. The drops freeze into ice. Inside the cloud, these tiny bits of ice start to fall. But they don't always fall out of the cloud. Instead, they may be carried upward by the air that is moving away from the earth. As they are carried upward, more water collects on the tiny bits of ice. When that water freezes, the drops of ice have another layer on them. The ice drops are now heavier, so once more they fall toward the earth. But air is moving away from the earth, and it may carry the ice drops upward again. Higher and higher they go, and another layer of ice freezes onto them. The ice drops get heavier and heavier. They get so heavy that the air can no longer carry them upward. So the ice drops fall to the earth. It's raining ice. Yikes. The ice drops are called hailstones. They may be the size of your fingernail, or they may be as big as golf balls, or even bigger. In 1970, hailstones as big as softballs fell in Kansas. Fields of corn were flattened by the hailstones. Hailstones are not stones, they're pieces of ice. So when it hails, go inside so, so you're not hit on the head. When it, when it stops hailing, go outside, pick up a hailstone, break it in two, and you will see the layers of ice inside. Water in the clouds makes hail. Water in the clouds makes rain. When it stops raining or hailing, the sun comes out. Once more, water evaporates. It evaporates from lakes, rivers, and oceans. It evaporates from the leaves of plants or the wet ground. It evaporates from cows, horses, and cats, and from you and me. The water changes to water vapor. It's carried up and away from the earth where the air is cool or even freezing. When the water vapor cools, it condenses. The water vapor changes to water droplets and all together the droplets make clouds. Water droplets join together to make water drops. The drops fall to earth from the clouds. And once more, it's raining. The end. Hope you enjoyed Down Comes the Rain.